just going to put the anchor down, park up my kayak and go for a bit of a swim around this area. It's looking promising, hopefully it's a little bit fishy here and I can find a couple of uh, fish for the table. Well, good morning. What a day. We're almost out of this lockdown and I've been really trying hard not to go out. Just to set a bit of an example because, I mean, going out and all that is all good, but, you know, we've done the hard yards and being a business owner, I want to see, you know, this country restore itself and I think we've done a pretty good job of it. So, anyway, I'm heading out I'm on the east coast of Coromandel and I've been hanging out to get in the water so today that's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to jump in for a dive, see if I can find a couple of crays, you know, and just generally swim around and just enjoy myself. You know, this is just, I've missed doing this so much so it's been a while since I've had a dive so I'm going to take it easy today, safety first. So anyway, let's head out there. Well, we're at the first spot. Not even got to worry about opening the anchor up. It's so, so um, calm. I mean, look at the conditions. Couldn't ask for better, so I'm just going to put the anchor down, park up my kayak, and go for a bit of a swim around this area. Um, I do tow my kayak around, if you're wondering. You know, sometimes when I'm spearfishing and that, but I like to use a real gun, and with, you know, snapper potentially here, there's a good chance there's one around, so I like to keep things as quiet as possible, you know, and um, yeah, just, you know, go with the real gun and, and try and see what I can find. So I'm going to do a bit of spear fishing, and I'm also going to look for some crays. Hanging, been hanging out for this, so yeah, super excited. Whoa, and a fish just jumping in front of me there, so yeah, it's looking promising. Hopefully it's a little bit fishy here, and I can find a couple of uh, fish for the table. I started diving on a likely nearby weed line that I've dived numerous times during my 20 years of living in Coromandel. It's a great spot and usually you can find a John Dory, especially at the base where the weed meets the sand. Unfortunately, water clarity wasn't that great. Yet, with an outgoing tide for the rest of the day till late afternoon, Hopefully I would find something. With the first part of the weed line producing nothing, I moved along to try another area. Once again, I made many dives, swimming along the edge of the weed line where it meets the sand in search of a John Dory holding up and resting in weight of some prey. But with the lack of bait fish around, there didn't appear to be much happening. So I kept moving, and diving new areas in hope of finding something decent. Moving another 100 metres along the coast, I came to a likely looking area, so I dropped the anchor to let the kayak sit and then began to swim over a shallow ledge. And as I did so, three kingfish came over at me, which completely caught me by surprise. And I didn't have the camera rolling, but it certainly was something I didn't expect. During the brief moment that the kingfish were there, I did manage to get the gun out and have a shot, but I blew it completely with the spear falling underneath one of them. I was feeling annoyed with myself for missing such an easy shot and being so blasé about it. The feeling was soon replaced with excitement though, especially at the prospect of some decent fish around. So I hung out in open water in hopes some more kingfish might show up. 
After giving it a few minutes and nothing showing up, I decided to start diving down and checking the big boulders covered in kelp along the edges for anything that might be sitting at their base like a John Dory or a snapper. Despite making many more dives in what was absolutely perfect country, there just didn't seem to be anything around. One thing I did come into contact with was these jellyfish, and there were hundreds of them around. I was unlucky enough to have one of those long tentacles that comes off these jellyfish come in contact with my lips, and it wasn't a particularly great sensation, but the thought of getting a decent fish for the table soon made me forget about it. After this, I decided to change location, and during a spell while I was towing the kayak and swimming through a very shallow water area, I spooked two real decent snapper, and they were right up in about a metre and a half of water. It was completely unexpected, and um, I think also the snapper got a bit of a surprise when they came across me. Heading for the nearest rock so I could grab some cover, I hung around waiting to see if the snapper would come back. To my surprise, one of them quickly returned, but kept its distance, staying well out of the range of my gun. Then I laid down some kinnaburley at a spot which had good cover. While waiting for the kinnaburley to do its thing, I went off and shifted the kayak which had been anchored close by. Hopefully by doing this the snapper wouldn't have a clue that I was still around. As I approached the Kinnaburley I tried to be as quiet as possible, keeping my fins well below the surface of the water so I wouldn't make any splashes. Then I stayed well behind the rocks and weed, using them for cover so the snapper wouldn't see me. As I carefully peered over the edge of the weed, I noticed only a few small fish around, so I decided to give it a bit longer. I stayed quiet once again on my return, and this time something had shown up. The shot was good, and the fish immediately took off in the opposite direction to me. My reel kicked in and let it run, and I took my time trying to get the fish because I didn't know how good the shot was holding in the fish. Because it was so shallow, the fish was fighting more on the surface than down into the weed and the rocks like they normally do. This made it a bit of a challenge, and I wasn't able to play the fish out like I normally would. I soon had my hands on the fish, but because it was still so green and feisty, the snapper struggled even harder and managed to get away from me again. This time, I let the fish run a little more to tire it out and soon after grabbed it and dispatched it quickly. Finally, all my hard work had paid off, and it was a nice fish that would feed us for many days. So feeling content, I headed back to the kayak to stow the fish, and then I proceeded to move on to look for some crayfish. How's it going? Alright, well, I'm just shifting spots, and um, I'd normally swim this, but yeah, that, that was pretty cool. I came across that snapper. I spoke that actually, I was swimming around really close to the coast, around this island, and uh, bang! Saw the snapper, spoke it, there was two of them actually, one was way bigger than the one I took. And uh, so I broke up a bit of canner and, and just waited a few minutes and came back and sure enough, snapper on the spear. So pretty happy, it's pretty much, it's probably a little bit bigger than I like to keep, but given that I'm hanging for a feed of fish, it's been, it's been about a week since I had my last lot of snapper, so I'll just keep that one fish today and I'll keep looking for some craze and hopefully find some.
So I'm back on shore, but I don't know if you can see this. Have a look. The wind's come up, and uh, she's getting a little bit choppy. It's not too bad, but it's kind of there was a bit of an easterly forecast. But anyway, I worked bloody hard for those crates, and uh, didn't really manage to find anything that I wanted to keep. But they're all undersized, you know. Bit of a shame, but look, I'm not complaining. I just getting in the water here and around and shooting that snapper earlier made this all well worth the effort you know and I've had a great time just swimming around looking for fish you know and looking for craze so anyway I'm gonna head back now I might stop at one more spot on the way back conditions deteriorated even further so I pulled the pin and headed for home Here's a nice recipe to tantalise the taste buds using snapper. It's easy to make and gives great results. First start by making up a beer batter mix using one cup of flour, a teaspoon of baking soda, a quarter teaspoon of sea salt, one egg and about two thirds of a 330ml bottle of beer. First sift all the dry ingredients together then make a well in the centre of the bowl and break the egg into it. Using a whisk, break up the egg first, then slowly drizzle in the beer while mixing constantly. It's important to get the consistency just right, so if it's too thick, add a little more beer. As a general guide, it should be slightly runny, but also have enough consistency that it sticks to the whisk. Once you've got this right, set aside the batter for half an hour or more in the refrigerator. Now it's time to make the sweet and sour sauce. For this you'll need 400 gram tin of pineapple and the juice, water, half a cup of malt vinegar, two tablespoons of corn flour, half a cup of brown sugar, two tablespoons of soy sauce and a green, orange or red capsicum which is optional. Start by mixing the cup of water with the pineapple juice from the tin. Then combine the vinegar, corn flour, brown sugar and soy sauce in a shaker. Now add the contents of the shaker into a small saucepan. On a low to medium heat, stir constantly and simmer until the mix thickens, which will take about 5 to 10 minutes. Slowly add the pineapple and water mixture while stirring. Then continue to stir slowly over a medium heat until the sauce re-thickens again. And once it just starts to boil, simmer for a further 5 to 10 minutes on a low heat. While this is happening, get your fish and dry it off with paper towels. Now cut the fish into pieces that are 1 inch by 1 and a half to 2 inches in size. I find larger snapper from 6 to 10 pound are much more suitable for this because of their thicker fillets. Now go back to the sweet and sour sauce and add in the optional chopped capsicum and pineapple pieces. Stir in and then allow to simmer for another 5 minutes on a very low heat. Our sauce is now ready to use and can be set aside. One good thing about this is it can be pre-made in advance and then reheated when it's ready to be used. Preheat a shallow fry pan or a deep fryer, then coat your fish pieces entirely with flour. Place the floured fish pieces into the batter mix and make sure you coat them well. With your oil preheated up to temperature, put the fish into the deep fryer or shallow fry in a fry pan until golden crispy and brown on both sides. Drain the fish on paper towels before serving and then reheat the sweet and sour sauce so it's ready to use when you're ready to plate up. Serve the fish on a bed of rice or egg noodles and then once you've put a few pieces on top it with the sweet and sour sauce. It's entirely up to you how much of the sauce you put on as long as there's enough for everyone but make sure you give the fish a really good coating now it's ready to eat you'll really enjoy tasting this one so give it a try